Hello, my name is Alex, and today we're going to talk about DNS rebinding attacks. So, for those for a few that's not familiar with DNS rebinding, uh, you will be very surprised that uh, this is a very simple attack that you can pull very easily, uh, and it's very dangerous. And the bad news is that everyone, literally everyone, unless you have taken uh, any deliberate steps to mitigate it are vulnerable. So let's dive in. So I'm going to explain how, how, how it's done and uh, how you can protect yourself uh, from this kind of attacks. So basically DNS rebinding attack uh, allows any script running on any website uh, to bypass the browser's same origin policy and make a arbitrary request to your local network attacking your IoT devices, your network uh, uh, equipment, your router, uh, anything that's uh, in your local network. Uh, so let's dive in. So first off, to understand uh, what is a DNS rebinding, we have to understand what the DNS is. So uh, for example, we're sitting with uh, our device and we just want to visit uh, google.com, right? So our device doesn't know uh, the address of the Google, right? And uh, as we know, the internet works with IP addresses, not domain names, like not with names. So to translate domain names like google.com to its uh, corresponding IP address, we need a DNS server. So that's the job of the DNS server. Uh, so we, uh, our device makes a request to the DNS server asking what's the IP of the google.com. So DNS server uh, replies with the response and says, for example, it's 172.217.5238. Okay. Uh, our device gets the IP address and then it connects to the web server with that, uh, using that IP address and gets the contents and displays the page. Okay. So uh, let's uh, let's uh, make it more complicated, but just as much as we need for this example. So again, we're with uh, our device sitting and wants to, and we want to go visit Google.com, and we make request actually to our uh, most of the time this is our ISP DNS server or it's our organization's DNS server. So we make the request uh, asking for the IP address of the Google.com. And uh, what did our local DNS server does? Uh, it looks in this uh, cache and says, oh, shoot, I don't know. And what he has to do is has to go to the internet and find the name server of the google.com. So let's just skip this part, how it finds it. So uh, it finds it, uh, it makes the query to the Google's DNS server. And asks, asks the same question, like what, what the IP address of the google.com. Uh, Google's name server replies with the IP address and also it adds a uh, notion of caching. It says like just cache it for 12 hours, for example, and don't bother me again until this time is elapsed. Okay, uh, and what uh, our local ISPs, for example, the NS server does, it uh, caches uh, the request for the next uh, 12 hours, how much it was told and returns uh, our device the IP address that's good, that it got. Okay, uh, so the next notion, uh, I think this part is clear. So it, we, we make DNS query and the, so DNS queries are uh, usually cached for some time to minimize the load on the uh, particular domain's DNS server. Okay, so now the next notion that we have to understand is the same origin policy. Okay, uh, so we visited some web page and in the corner somewhere we got an ad, of course. So this ad uh, has to be loaded from the other domain. And uh, in our example, it's like uh, just a script tag on the page, uh, which points to the annoyingads.com slash ad.gs. Uh, so what our browser has to do, it has to go and fetch it uh, this this uh, this JavaScript to to display the ad. So in this case, the domain is annoyingads.com because all ads, of course, are annoying. 
Okay, uh, so the same origin policy says that uh, any script that is originated from uh, some domain can, can make uh, any consequent request to that domain. Uh, this is uh, this same origin policy is uh, on by default in all our modern browsers, and it's one of the main uh, safeguards uh, in, uh, that uh, that is protecting us in the internet. Otherwise, for example, some random script loaded from some random domain would be able to make some, for example, some uh, call to the bank.com and using our logged in session. Uh, use it to get uh, to some mischief. So of course, browser doesn't uh, don't allow this. Otherwise, it will be a big mess, and uh, we couldn't like uh, browse the internet safely. Uh, okay, so uh, this is a notion of save origin policy, and as I told, it's on by default, and browsers enforce it. It's like some kind of uh, sandboxing for the scripts to separate uh, them uh, and not not allow to do other stuff okay so uh, let's dive into the dns rebinding finally so uh, in this example again so this this we have the ad on the on the page and to pull that uh, javascript as i told from the annoying ads.com of course our group browser again doesn't know the uh, IP address of this domain and should go to the DNS server to ask for it, right? And it goes to the finds the DNS server of annoyingthegads.com, ask and ask for its IP address. So this DNS server replies with the IP address, and the important part here is uh, that it says cache it for zero minutes or some minuscule amount of time, like 10 seconds or something like that. Okay, uh, it means like don't cache it at all. So what uh, what the script does next? So it's got this IP address, it fetched, uh, our browser fetched the uh, ad successfully, fetched the JavaScript, script already in the browser. And what the script does? Uh, it waits a little bit waits until the browser cache is expired because browsers are also caching uh, DNS queries for a little bit. And what it does next. So our ad, after waiting for some time, makes another query to annoyingads.com. And what the uh, evil DNS server, like we see here, does next. So it replies with, oh, the IP address of annoyingads.com is 192.168.1.1 which is, uh, in fact, most in the most of the cases, is uh, the, our local IP of our, of our local router. So, uh, and our browser doesn't suspect anything. It got the DNS query, it got the response, and it connects to the router. And all subsequent queries that uh, this script does to its own domain are actually going to our router. And uh, what it can do, like after the first request, it got the header, uh, HTTP headers from the router. It got the make and model of the router. Of course, maybe it has also the default username and passwords of different brands of routers. Uh, or it just can start brute forcing. And after gaining access to our router, and then the party begins. Because uh, then it can, for example, replace the firmware off another attacks, do man in the middle attacks, I don't know, just uh, your imagination is the limit here, what you can do next if you have full access to the router. So <clears throat> the question is how we can protect ourselves from this kind of stuff. Uh, if you think about it, there is no uh, valid reason for any public DNS server to return an IP address for uh, local IP address uh, at all. So, for example, if we're querying the public domain, there is no real need for anyone to return a local IP for that for that domain. And uh, the bad news is, no DNS server, no public DNS server, uh, no ISP DNS servers are blocking this kind of responses. So, uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, like literally anyone. Uh, everyone is uh, 
vulnerable to this kind of attacks. And it's as you saw, it's very simple, it's very uh, easy to do. And any device, like right now, that you visit uh, with any device uh, that you visit any website, can pull off such attack. So usually we think that our local network is a safe place. We feel more safe there. For example, we can. Uh, keep wide open file sharing, I don't know, development servers, uh, all kinds of stuff like our I IoT devices, everything. And uh, we usually think that uh, we got this false, uh, false uh, sense of security of the, that we are behind the NAT router uh, and uh, we don't uh, like, uh, we are in, in a safe place, but actually like any web page, any script running on any web page can pull off this very, very easily. It takes like nothing. Okay. So what we can do? <clears throat> uh, the the only DNS server that supports blocking uh, of uh, local IP responses is the OpenDNS. So you can find it at OpenDNS.com. But the problem is here that it's not turned on by default. So you have to register your network. Uh, you have to like register on the website, register your network, go to the security tab, and you can find this checkbox which says suspicious responses. And the trouble is, it's not blocking uh, uh, local host IP like 127.0.0.1. It's not blocking that uh, network, but it's better than nothing, and it's uh, really really easy to like migrate to open dns uh, but if you don't want that i got a better solution for that so it's better to install dns script so you can find it at dns script.info and dns script is uh, yeah, there is you can find there are lots of uh, implementations for different platforms and uh, DNS script is an actually the local DNS caching proxy that also does DNS encryption and uh, supports DNSSEC, supports DNS over TLS, DNS over HTTPS, uh, and it has very easy way to blacklist uh, response IPs. So you can like uh, blacklist uh, all these local IPs and uh, you will be in total safety after that. And you can also configure it on, on the router so all your network will be secure. Uh, and uh, the benefit also, you will have uh, your local cache and DNS encryption because uh, DNS is not encrypted at all, it's not secure. And it's another big uh, issue and another topic for uh, another video, I think. So uh, I just, uh, I just uh, advise that everybody go and uh, check out DNS script for this matter. Uh, also, another tool that I will suggest, uh, you can use DNS bench by Steve Gibson at uh, grc.com. Um, this is a very good tool for testing uh, DNS servers for their speed, for their response times, for security features, and uh, as a bonus, it also does the re DNS rebinding test. Uh, for example, here uh, in this screenshot, as you can see, the local host one has uh, two circles, and the second circle outside means that it has uh, DNS rebinding protection. So as you see, the other ones doesn't have it. Uh, also, you can test it yourself. Just uh, open up any uh, console or any DNS querying tool. And just you can make an NS lookup of uh, net 10 rebind test.com, net 192, 127. And if you get uh, the local IP in, the re in return, it means you are in danger. It means uh, this attack will work right away on your network, on your device. And if you got, for example, reject, if you got another IP, not a local one, uh, it means you are, you are safe. Okay, thank you very much. That's it for now. Goodbye.